everybody. Oops. Hey, I just got an error message, but apparently uh, I'm seeing that folks are able to join, so I assume we're okay. Uh, thanks for showing up. This is Vox Day, voxday.blogspot.com. Comments are even on, uh, so feel free to comment, feel free to like um, as you see fit. Um, sorry I wasn't able to do it at the regular time, um, but... Uh, I was actually discussing the possibility of uh, turning this into something a little bit more um, upmarket. So, um, <laughs> some of you may have seen that Mike Cernovich has a, a new show with Right Side, and um, it's possible possible that we'll be doing something. Uh, I'll be doing something with them as well. We will see. Um, my chair is awesome. Uh, it's my grandfather's chair. So. Yeah, uh, we, by the way, uh, Trump Slide 2016 shirts. Um, Crypto Fashion now has Trump Slide 2020 shirts on the way. And so uh, we're going to do a two for one deal. If you buy two, uh, two shirts, then you get a Trump Slide 2016 shirt free. Um, I'll put it up on the blog tomorrow, but I would, I would highly recommend it just because. Um, there's nothing more fun than walking around wearing one of these, um, you know, because people know, people know that you saw it coming. Um, you know, these shirts were produced well before the election, so um, yeah. So definitely pick up a, you know, it's it's a great deal, two for one. Get an SJW's Always Live shirt. Get a, um, you know, one of the other ones, maybe a Castellia House shirt, whatever, and pick up a free Trump Slide 2016 or. You could even get a Trump slide 2020 and a 2016. Um, <laughs> anyhow, um, it's all good, so it's fun. But I will uh, the thing I have to say is we were very particular about this. Is I actually had the guy send me the shirts um, with different types of t-shirts because I wanted to make sure that they we got like the soft, um, more form-fitting ones. I, I hate those big, heavy ones that just sort of like hang on everybody like a tent. So. So the, the quality of these is, is really nice. Um, anyhow, so here's a question for you all. Um, what do you think about um, the idea of me starting a book club with some of the other right-wing figures that you know and love? Um, you know, you can probably guess who some of the people involved would be. I'm not going to name any names, but... Um, you know what we're th what we're thinking of is a um, how much per month? I don't understand the question. Like how often? Uh, it would be a once a week show. You know, I mean, you can't do, you can't talk about. I mean, I could talk about books every night, but people can't read them that quickly. Whose books? Uh, theoretically, anyone's, and we're not just going to talk about Castelia House books. Um, the, uh, you know, I did a thing. Some of you may remember, if, if you've been reading my blog for a while, I did a thing called Voxiversity. And what that was, was once a week, we would um, read one chapter of a book, and then I'd, have a, I'd post a quiz. It was a 10-question 10 10 quiz every week, multiple choice. Um, <laughs> would I give up a finger to sign Milo to Castelia? No, I wouldn't. I think that I think that Milo is doing the right thing, working with a, a mainstream publisher. You know, Castelli is not set up to to deliver the number one book in in the world. You know, we don't have that kind. Um, I'm not. Who do I have in mind? Cernovich or Molyneux? Um, let's just say that everybody will be involved. Um, that would probably be the the easiest way to do it. Um, not every time, not every time, but, um, you know, we're, we're going to, we're, you know, uh, I don't think Stefan has, has announced it yet, but Castelli is going to be publishing, um, one of his books, uh, pretty soon. Uh, it's, it's a book that he already had, had out, um, a novel, but it wasn't, it wasn't really, um, it wasn't edited. So anyhow, I'm, I'm, I'm editing it. We're going to retitle it and so forth. And, uh. It's going to be really good. Um, 
so the, the, anyhow, what, what my idea is is that we'll talk about um, we'll, we'll talk about books. Oh, he announced. Oh, great. Well, I'm not on Twitter, so um, what, did did he announce the title by any chance? I'm I'm hesitant. I'm hesitant to steal his thunder. I look low energy today. Um, I have to admit, uh, I am a bit low energy at the moment. Um, I have a sprained ankle, um, and uh, I was I was playing uh, indoor soccer, and um, got badly faked out of my uh, out of my jock strap, and uh, ended up uh, <laughs> ended up twisting my uh, twisting my ankle. So, and hey, no, I was I did it like the like the second minute of the practice, um, and I actually ended up playing. Uh, ended up playing the entire practice, which my wife was very happy about. Um, <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, I'm fine. It's just swollen, um, but I'm definitely not standing today. I, I'm going to go back to standing for these. I think for the um, for the rest of the free trade stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll sit. It, it's helpful when I need to sort of sit and think a bit. But um, I think that for uh, I think it works a little better when I'm standing for these more casual things. Um, Anyhow, do I think a competitive sports is good for testosterone? Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny because because half the people are saying yes, Stan, and half the people are saying no, no, we we want to see your chair. So I mean, sometimes I think that you actually just show up and like just leave the chair here so people can sit and admire it, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, stand next to chair. I don't know. Yeah, that's that could work. Um, I'm not standing on the chair. Anyhow. Um, so, the, so what, what I'm thinking with the, the book club thing is um, we're going to have, uh, we're going to select a book that the, the two people have, have read. So, you know, I'm probably, I'm, not probably, I'm going to be the, the regular host and then I'm going to have um, one of a, a series of, of rotating co-hosts. Um, and like I said, you can probably guess who most of them are. And, uh, you know, then we will talk about the, the books that uh, usually usually one that the, the co-host will have selected. Every now and then it might be one that the co-host has written. Um, or we might, um, you know, depending on how it goes, we might talk with a, a third party if possible. And we're still sorting out the details. There's a lot of minor uh, technical details to sort out. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what we're working on. So... Anyhow, I'm glad to hear that you guys are interested. Um, you know, it, it, this is something that, uh, you know, we're hoping we would have uh, broad support. And it's also something that will go on YouTube so people can see it at any time. It's not going to be like a, it's not going to be just a Periscope type thing. Um, book club will be video based. Yes. Um, I don't know exactly how, how it's going to work. I don't understand what $9.95 a month means either. Um, I thought we would just do it free. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, uh, what book would you do first? Well, that's really going to be up to the um, to the co-host initially. So, uh, oh, what you'd pay for? Okay, well, that's cool to know. Um, the uh, oh yeah, speaking of John C. Wright, um, definitely check out uh, his new book, Daughter of Danger. Um, it's uh, it's the fourth in his Moth and Cobweb series, but you can start read it. You can start with it because uh, the first three books are actually a trilogy about the Green Knight Squire. The, the da Daughter of Danger is the first book in the trilogy about the Dark Avenger sidekick, and so um, uh, it's good. It's short, you know. Um, it, it's good for teenagers. Um, even if the cover is apparently uh, considered a little risque by some, um, but it's, it's a scene from the book, you know. So what do you do? Uh, hang on a second, yeah. So, um, anyhow, it, you know, if you get a chance, definitely check out Daughter of Danger. Um, really good book. We just published it today, and so, um, and uh, it's it's interesting. We're also experimenting with putting it out via uh, iBooks. And Google Play and all that sort of thing. We're, we're using Macmillan's new service, and so we're, we're going to see how that goes. Anyhow, um, and then you, I've mentioned it before. Some of you may not know that um, my my collection of columns uh, apparently 
it says 750 pages, but it's um, in print, it's actually 915 pages. Um, it's all the columns that I wrote from 2001 to 2005 for World Net Daily and Universal Press Syndicate. Uh, it's called Innocence and Intellect 2001 to 2005. And um, it, it's done really well. And, and um, so if you've already picked that up, thanks for your support. And um, if you haven't, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a good snapshot of history during that time. Um, I think you'll, you'll find it interesting. I, I actually found it kind of interesting because I didn't remember writing half of them. So, but let, yeah, let's get on to the talking about the judicial activision, uh, activism and let's talk about what's going on with the God Emperor. Now, uh, in SJWs Always Lie, we talked about the way that SJWs double down. And so what we're seeing is that the judiciary is openly declaring war on Donald Trump. They're openly declaring war on the executive branch. Now, this is not, <laughs> it's not a Chelsea shirt for crying out loud. It's a Trump slide shirt, please. Anyhow, um, the, uh, the fact that Donald Trump put a portrait of Andrew Jackson in his office is potentially very significant in this regard because Andrew Jackson is the president who very publicly blew off the Supreme Court justice and he said he has made his ruling now let him enforce it and so you know, Trump knows he is he knows he has the ability to blow off the judiciary now that doesn't mean that it's tactically the right move to call them on their bluff right away you know so I, I believe that is why he is going through uh, the, the process I think that he would rather see the ruling and the Ninth Circuit ruling uh, overturned by the courts, if, if possible. And so, um, but, you know, there's no, there's no point in doing it. You know, you need to, um, you need to uh, try and um, choose your shots and pick your battles. You know, Trump is very, very busy now in a way that he was not in the campaign, but the same principle of the way he approaches things is uh, is is normal um, you know he pushes and then he backs up and he lets things slide for a little bit and so um, so the, I don't believe that there is any serious surprise on the part of the Trump administration that this has happened um, is Trump a lot more intelligent and cognizant than he seems? If so, how intelligent? Yes, he's extremely intelligent. You don't go to the Wharton Business School without being intelligent. You don't have the kind of success that he has in a wide variety of fields um, that without being intelligent. Now, um, you know, I don't believe that he is necessarily as intelligent as Hillary Clinton. You know, Hillary Clinton, we know, was a... Um, national merit semifinalist. So we know that she has at a bare minimum an IQ of around 135. Barack Obama, we know that that you know had an IQ in the sort of 115 to 120 range. Um, now what the reason that people think Trump is less intelligent than he is is because of how he talks. But you know I can tell you <laughs> um, you know it was kind of funny when we moved to Italy I didn't speak any Italian. And so I, uh, I spoke very, very bad Italian and I didn't have much ability to communicate very complicated concepts. And so it was rather funny when the guys on my football team found out not only that I was a writer, but they found out that I wrote about economics and philosophy. And it was kind of funny because one of the guys came up to me and said, uh, you know, we all thought you were very stupid, but... Uh, I just didn't have the words, you know. Now, Trump spends an awful lot of his time communicating with people who do not have 130 IQs. And so, um, you, you know, he has he is accustomed to communicating at a relatively low level. And and it's effective for him, you know, because as, as a whether it's as a politician or as a celebrity, those are the kind of people 
that uh, you need to be able to communicate with. And what a lot of people don't understand is that it is very, very difficult for highly intelligent people to communicate with regular people. It is absolutely a, a skill and it is a difficult skill. And so the fact that the fact that Trump is that intelligent and is able to communicate across what they call the, the 30 IQ communications gap, it actually tends to indicate that he is, is not only intelligent, but he's, he's an intelligent in a very practical way. You know, I do not communicate very well with your sort of average 100 IQ individual. It, it usually goes, usually goes awry sooner or later, you know. And so I really appreciate the fact that Trump is able to communicate with normal people. The fact that he's able to communicate with, you know, even people who have below intel, below average intelligences. Um, and so, uh, see, <laughs> like like right here, you see this. You're making literally no sense whatsoever. You're right there, you're probably talking, uh, uh, that person is almost certainly more than 30 IQ points lower than I am because that's what that's what you know the lower intelligences do. When they can't understand it because they're too stupid, they assume that you're making you're not making sense. And so I, I, in fact, that's even something that I put put up the um, uh, Vox's first law. You know, any sufficiently advanced intelligence is indistinguishable from insanity. And so, um, the, the, the more intelligent you are, the more complicated your sentences are, the more difficult the concepts that you utilize are, the less sense it makes to the average intelligence. And they just assume that you, you don't make sense. They just assume you're babbling. They, you know, they love to talk about, you know, oh, that's just word salad or something. And it's always kind of funny when, uh, when they say word salad and you look at it and it's a perfectly sensible sentence but they can't understand that so anyhow um so getting back to the judiciary what we're seeing is the, the judiciary is just it's exactly the situation that we have with the opposition media they might as well call the judiciary the opposition judiciary because they are going to use whatever power they have to obstruct and overturn and get in the way of everything that Trump does. It doesn't matter what it is. They are going to attempt to find a way to obstruct and overturn it. And they're going to, you know, appeal to the Constitution. They're going to appeal to all these ideals that they absolutely shit upon when Obama was in power. Um, and there's not a chance that the God Emperor does not understand that. There is not a chance that they don't know what is happening. <laughs> um, that's funny. You saying Trump is intelligent actually makes your credibility suspect. Um, no. What it indicates is that you have an IQ that is more than two standard deviations below mine or Donald Trump's because there's absolutely no question that Donald Trump is intelligent, none whatsoever. Um, and so, uh, you know, a lot of people tend to forget not only did Trump win, Trump actually fired both of his campaign, his first two campaign managers and brought in the third one so that he was able to win because the, the first two guys were not, he understood were not able to get it done. Contrast that with Hillary Clinton, who ironically enough is actually highly intelligent or at least was uh, before she got brain damaged. Um, and so the... Um, you know what you what you what you saw her doing you know she had an incompetent campaign manager who actually did not understand the rules of the democratic uh, nomination process and so they were <laughs> they were um, it was totally incompetent it, this is back in 2008 not the current one and so um, you know the fact that Hillary's intelligent doesn't matter because she's not able to apply her intelligent very effectively and so, um, so what, what I'm saying is that Trump understands that the judiciary is, is opposition. Bannon definitely, definitely understands 
that the opposition is, that the judiciary is intrinsically oppositional. And so you can guarantee that they have a plan in place. Now, what the plan may be, I don't know. And more importantly, I don't know what the the timing is. Uh, somebody wants to know if I'm, um, that should answer the question, I assume. Um, oh, this is this is good. This is the new, by the way, this is the new line. This is the new narrative. You know, I talk about SJW narratives. The new one is, Bannon is the real president. Bannon is the real president. No, Bannon is not the real president. Bannon is the conciliere. Bannon is the strategist, you know? I mean, Bannon has, has no idea. He's, he has no goal whatsoever to being president. And so, um, I mean, I, I love Steve Bannon. He, he is, he, I mean, between, I don't know who I love more, Steve Bannon or Bill Belichick, but, um, but you know, they are, uh, they are the sharp guys, the strategists, um, you know, and so, but you know, Bannon wasn't, uh, he wasn't the campaign manager. He, that's not his job. And so, um, but the thing you need to keep in mind is that the strategist is not working on the day-to-day -day time frame. They're not working on the tactical side. And so, um, you know, so the, the thing is you, they're going to make mistakes. You know, they're, they're new with this. Uh, they're new at this, so they, they will make mistakes. But what you can un be sure of is that the Trump administration is going to learn from their mistakes. They're not going to continually double down. Um, you know, Scott Adams talks about how Trump <clears throat> likes to do A-B testing. So you're going to see a lot of that stuff. You're going to see them putting out this, putting out that, and seeing what works. And then what they'll do is they'll reinforce success, and they will stop uh stop reinforcing failure. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand that uh, failure is necessary for, for success. You know, one thing that I tell people all the time is fail faster. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, like the football games. Think about how many times you're watching a football game and you see a football team do something that is designed to delay the, the final test. You know, Bill Belichick's a very smart coach. What was he doing in, in the third quarter? He was taking risks. He was going for it on fourth and third, fourth and three in his own territory um, with, you know, six minutes left in the third quarter. That could have ended the game right there. Um, they were making decisions that w were high risk, that, that risked ending the game because he knew that they were so far behind that they needed to take those risks at that time or they would lose the game. So he took the risks, was successful, and was able to, was able to um, be successful ultimately in the end. And so, but you're always going to have failures. You're always going to have try tactics that don't work. Also, even if you discover a tactic that works, the enemy is going to counter it. They always counter it. You have to expect them to counter it. So the, the test is not, you know, oh, can we come up with one magic tactic that is going to, that is going to work every single time? It's not going to happen. That never happens. You come up with the tactic, you use it as long as it is effective, and then you get, uh, and then once it gets neutralized, then you switch to a new tactic. And, and what makes a master strategist is someone who is able to foresee this give and take of tactics and use it to their advantage. And so, uh, you know, Bannon is not overly concerned. Here, okay, here's a good question. If he was so intelligent, why roll out this ban so horribly that it could have been done much more effective? Well, here's what I think. I think that this is the classic A-B testing. I think he wanted to see what the media was going to do with a very reasonable ban that was very similar to the Obama ban that no one objected to, okay? How do you think about it? How do you test what the, how, <laughs> I don't have any evidence for, I don't have, oh, I'm sorry, somebody's responded to something else. Um, no, we're not talking about, it wasn't bait, it was a test, okay? They didn't know 
how the media was going to react to uh, any any act that Trump did. So what they did, you know, because he's talked about the Muslim ban, he's talked about uh, all these other things. And so what he did is he put it out there. And then what happened is that the media demonstrated that they're going to cover it inaccurately. They're going to attack it um, in every possible way that the judiciary was going to roll out against it. Okay. And now, right, that's exactly right. Now they have carte blanche. What is the left? Okay. Let's say that next week Trump comes out and issues a Muslim ban, a, a, a complete Muslim ban. What is the media and the judiciary going to do differently than they did last week? Okay, they now know that the media is willing to freak out no matter what they do. And so what that is going to tell Bannon is that they can do whatever they want because the media is going to react the same way every time. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that he's going to to do that. I'm not making any prediction. Never, never seen any prediction or, or uh, uh, ind indication. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know exactly what the goals are. But what we know is that now Bannon has uh, an ability. He knows exactly what the media reaction is going to be, and he knows there's absolutely no point in trying to work. And cooperate with the media or with the judiciary and so i think that that it's going to be very interesting to see in the next few weeks what the trump administration does i don't think they're going to back down excuse me i think that they are going to see a uh, i think we're going to see them once they once he has his people in place once he has uh sessions in place i think that you're going to see them coming out with executive orders that are much more comprehensive, that are much more serious than, um, than we've seen so far. I, I think that all we're seeing right now is, is, is various testing of the waters, testing the, the opponents. I mean, this is scouting. And, and so, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be f fascinating to see what they're going to come up with next, but I, I guarantee that they're going to come up with some, uh, with some interesting things. So anyhow, Thank you for your time. Um, thanks for the uh, input on the book on the book club. Um, please feel free to stop by tomorrow for uh, the, for the dark stream tomorrow, and uh, don't forget to check out Daughter of Danger by John C. Wright on Amazon, and uh, we'll see you soon.